Hello! Hello, lovely people, and welcome yes. back to our YouTube channel. We're so happy that you're here. Yes, and we hope that before you're watching this video, you went to Spotify or to any other streaming platform you use and typed in Moment My Freedom by this. Emma and Eric and listened to the whole thing. Exactly. So now, this video that we're making for you today, that you're going to see today, is going to be about how we made that song, how I wrote the lyrics and the melody for the song, and how Eric produced the beat. So if you want to see how this goes, make sure to tune into this video, watch it till the end. But first, you should actually listen to the song. Yes, and so then go come back. listen to the song, come back. And then, maybe before you watch it, Listen to it a second time. Yes, and watch the video on YouTube. It's, oh, this is important. Music video. Music video. Of course, go watch the music of video. Of course. Right? Of course, watch the. Yeah. Of course, watch the. <laughs> heli, <laughs> heli <laughs> important. <laughs> we'll see. Without further ado, we get into the, the video. Hello, hello lovely people and welcome back to our YouTube channel. I am really, really, really glad that you're here because this is probably one of the most important videos I've ever made. It is about women, life, freedom. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit to you about how I wrote the song, how I've been just in general dealing with the whole situation and the revolution going on in Iran because I feel like it was a shock to all of us and we all dealt with it in different ways and for me since i'm a musician it's always writing or making a song or like singing and just writing my emotions on a paper that helps me the song came out i think a few days ago and um it this is a song that we've been me and eric have been working on for quite some time also because mostly it was very hard for me to write about this topic it it all just came out of my brain and my heart like i it was actually not super hard to write about it but to actually put the things that i thought about on paper and write it seemed something seemed like something i would never it seemed scary to be honest it seemed a little scary so first things first if you want to know more about how I write songs in general, how I write lyrics, how I write melodies, you could tell me in the comment section below and then I will make sure to make a video specifically about that and I will talk about how I actually go through the whole process of writing a song. Just a little thing to mention would be I decided to make this video and a lot of future videos in English because I just felt like it is easier for all of us to communicate in this language and for everyone who would watch this video, it's easier to just make videos in English, but I will definitely make videos in Persian as well. But for now, this is gonna be in English. So I hope you like it. So I have this little notebook thingy right here. This is a notebook that my university gave to me. It's from MOOC. And this has been kind of my best friend. I had another notebook and then it was completely filled. If you're a musician, if you're a songwriter, if you're a writer in general, you know how you really need to have a notebook with you. I always, I wouldn't say always, I sometimes write in my phone, sometimes on my laptop, sometimes just in this, but it mostly feels better when I'm writing on a piece of paper. It just, I'm used to that. So in this, I actually was looking at this uh, a while ago and I found bits and pieces of Women, Life, Freedom when I started writing it. It was actually here. This is Eric's flat, by the way. And he was not here. I just, I think I came here to take care of something where I was just here. I don't know. Anyhow, I just came home with the thought of, I need to write this song because the whole process, let me walk you through it. The whole process of us writing a song together goes in, different directions but when it's production based it's usually it usually starts with eric producing a certain beat um, or rather a demo and then he hands it out to me and then i would spend time probably a week probably sometimes it takes longer sometimes it doesn't work out but anyhow i just spend time writing on that and for me 
Sometimes melody happens first, sometimes lyrics happens first. But even if melody is happening first, which is usually the case if I'm actually writing something, I would first just listen to the beat or the production just to see how... I would just hum something to see where and what am I doing, what is the structure of it. So it actually started like that. This song started like that um, as well. But very surprisingly, it turned out to be something that happened all at once. And instead of me thinking little by little about the whole thing, because I tend to write and then sometimes come back for it, like the second verse or the refrain separately, and it usually takes more than one go. But this was mostly, I remember I just sat over there cannot see that but I sat over there and I played the song played the beat loud on speakers and I just started writing I first started just bursting out I think I was even crying or I was really emotional because I was just writing all these lines and all these lyrics that was kind of like stuck in my throat for months ever since um everything started happening in Iran so I just started writing and writing and writing And if you listen to the song, you figure it's very lyrics dominant. It has a lot, of, a lot of lyrics. I would still tell you that I wrote pretty much maybe three or four verses more, but you know, you cannot make the song go on forever. And there's just a lot to, to talk about. And a lot of the lyrics, I'm just going to go through a bit of the lyrics so that I can tell you how I came up with it or what I was thinking. I have this on my phone as well, because when I recorded it, I needed to look through it and sing it. This city is burning in fire, flames keep on reaching higher. You hold so much violence, telling me I should stay quiet. So the first four lines that I, when I started writing this was when there was an artist in Iran back in December or maybe September, um, that was because of all the blood that had been shed and all the p innocent people that had died um, and was killed by the government, he decided to go through the city in the ponds inside the city and, and just put red paint and red color in the water so that it resembled blood instead of water um, and when I wrote the flames keep on reaching higher the city is burning in fire I was just thinking of that in my head it's not exactly that but to me the whole idea of how many innocent people have been killed it's I'm also talking about it later in the song when I say your autocracy killed every dream she could be it's basically that all of us And especially all the women and all the people who had a lot of dreams, all the young teenagers, even teenagers who had a lot of dreams and a lot of goals were killed because of power, because of a certain government wanting a lot of power. Then I go on saying, you and me, we were united, shared dreams and hope and hoped for the brighter days, fell down on my knees, then he screamed fire. I think this speaks pretty much for itself, but I was just thinking of how We are all united and we are living to see the brighter days. We are living now, fighting now to see the days where we are free. And then the refrain has to be something for me, at least, that needed to be powerful, needed to be empowering and needed to actually help someone if you're going through this, to listen and to know that we will learn to how to fly again. This is where... I say, time is running, free our souls today, locked in cages. We'll learn how to fly again. We'll learn to fly again. Take my hand, hold your head up high today. Louder than the sirens, we'll learn to fly again. This is so important in my brain that our voices are and will be louder than the sirens of the police officers or the government officers. And this was even proven when Sherevin won the Grammy a few days ago which was amazing and it was such such a beautiful day when when I woke up to that news. And then the second verse is me just e 
expressing more anger towards the situation. It's like kind of a battle in my heart and in my head between, oh, I'm so weak, oh, I need help, oh, please be my voice. And then the other part being angry and wanting to shout and wanting to fight and wanting to say, I have so much to say, I cannot breathe. Oppression won't live. It's true, oppression won't live. It might go on for, a li for, for long, but it will not live and it will come to an end. So this is the second verse. And then going towards more hopeful things and just wishing that I could be free for a day, that I could let the wind in my hair take the pain away. And then ending it with who's going to stay sane all the way, which I think you can, we can all relate to at this point if we're Persian, Iranian. So yeah, that's that. That's how I came up with the lyrics and what was going on through my brain and my heart. It was just a lot of mixed up emotions. It was a lot of anger, a lot of hate, a lot of uh, wanting to really talk about it, wanting to really also deal with my own emotions because sometimes I feel like writing is helping me as well, not just because I'm writing music, because I'm, it's like I'm going through therapy with myself. So yeah, that was the lyrics part and the melody I think, ah, oh, the melody was a little bit more interesting because I think I was just humming something and Eric was doing the production and I was sitting next to him and I was suddenly like just going da, 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 something like that. And then he's like, oh, that's nice, which is in a lot of cases what happens when we're, when we're making music together. I'm like humming something, something. And then suddenly he's like, oh, that, that's nice, <laughs> which is, which is very nice for me. Then the rest of it, to be very honest with you. I don't remember about the melody. I just think that it was with the lyrics, formed with the lyrics, intertwined. And at the same time, this is one of the very few, like, fewest times that I just got everything in one go. It was, it was just in, like, probably 30 minutes. I sat down over there, wrote it, bam, it was done. And I felt like, oh my god, I have to say more, I have to say more. Like, I have a lot of things in my head that I need to talk about. But it's probably enough, <laughs> because we don't want to put out a song that's 10 minutes long. Um, yes, that's that. That's Women Life Freedom. I hope you like it. I hope you go listen to it. And I hope that it empowers you. I hope that it gives you strength. I hope that you like it. I hope that you stream it, that you watch the video on YouTube. And that you enjoyed this video. For the rest of this video, you will be seeing how Eric made the beat and how he produced the song which is super exciting. If you like this video up until this point, make sure to leave a, leave a thumb make sure to leave a thumbs up. Comment how you feel towards the song, comment what is going on in your head right now, how you're feeling right now. And make sure to subscribe to our channel. Bye from me. Bye. Hello lovely people. It's a me. Eric, not Mario, but Eric. I know I'm funny. So I guess if you made it this far in the song, you're interested in the production and how I do my things. Um, just a quick disclaimer, I'm not a mixing engineer, but I do my own mixes and to me they sound fine. Um, there's always room to be better but I just share what I do and how I do the things I do a lot of do's first let's just have a quick listen to our song time is running free our souls to the lock in cages we'll learn to fly again Oh, glad that you're still here let's dive into the production uh, I use Ableton and it looks something like this I have uh, some stuff going on I structured it into the 
part of the song, obviously, as you can see. And then I organized my tracks in uh, folders where you can see drums, bass, um, some effects, synths, and obviously the vocals. I mean, I'm gonna show you how I came up with the idea. It was basically where me and Emma, we were uh, together in like some evening uh, some months ago. We were really trying to like make something which would represent the vibe of the whole message, um, you know, the emotional part of the song. I wanted to make something which is um, a bit dark, scary, like making you a bit pressured, but still being bold and brave and energetic. So I came up with this drum loop. which I really liked. The most important thing I think in the drum loop is uh, the snare and the ghost snares, since those are providing this shuffle rhythm feel to the whole um, groove. So I'll show you that. Those are the snares soloed. Oh no, now they're soloed. <clears throat> Without the ghost snares, we can have a listen. Also sounds nice, but I prefer it with the ghost snares. Exactly. So that's what's up. Let's go further and have a look onto the bass, which sounds something like this. Yeah, basic synth patch here, made in Vital, which is a free synthesizer. Um, I have a square wave, uh, which is um, unison by four voices. Then I have a sine wave with the third harmonic, which becomes a parabolic shape, I think. That's what its name, just to give some solid low end. And obviously in the filter, uh, so you have this hover bass vibe. Then we have our synths. Like very, uh, like in pain sounding synth sounds, I would call them. And then we have the vocals. Time is run. Maybe in solo. Time is run and free our souls to Here again, quite basic. We have a main voice, which is in the center of the stereo spectrum. And then we have two doublings, which one is on the left, one is on the right which makes you perceive as the vocals are very wide. I basically just did what I thought is sounding nice. There are a lot of approaches to this, but I do it my way. Such a cheesy line. Maybe the most important part of the whole song, apart from the uh, refrain, is um, this part here, right? I mean, you, if you have listened to the song, you know what I mean. Um, this one. This part is especially important because after the like after the refrain, which is more like it has a few chords in there, like there is harmonic movement going on. Um, also, there is like the drum groove is kind of driving this part is more stationary because the bass sound is just one note there is no harmonic content the drum groove is also very how to say thin because the one thing which anchors everything is the kick the kick and the 808 the bass sound anchor the whole thing a lot the only thing in the drums which is like keep like keeps you going forward is this pitched up version of the previous groove, which sounds something like this. If I pitch it to the original pitch, it sounds yet again. Like the original groove, just without the kick drum. And if I pitch it up with a certain 
um, Ableton algorithm, it sounds like this. So yeah, this is probably one of the more important um, rhythmical elements in this part. That's about this part. We have obviously the vocals doing their thing with a few layers, whispers, and then pitch down part, a pitch down version. With a whisper as well to make it even more eerie. That's, I think, about this part. One of my favorite things in this song is this sound right here. Is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. I sadly don't have the patch anymore because it was too CPU heavy at one point. It's basically um, Serum. It's another uh, plugin I use. And I think it's um, a plugin, uh, Ableton native plugin called Shifter, which is applying a ring shift modulation to the sound. That's where you get this propeller thing type effect, which gets slower, like starts fast and gets slower. It gives the sound um, its movement. Slight thing I did here uh, to make the lyrics a bit more stand out is to add pitch down versions of the original to certain parts of the lyrics uh, or the voice rather, like here. So those words are very important and that's why I made like a version um, of the original which is like pitched down an octave. And blended with the original, obviously it sounds nice. The layers of the vocals. Um, for instance, here as well. Just adds a bit more color um, to normal. Um, just having one main vocal um, track and makes the lyrics also a bit more emotional. Um, what else? I think that's mostly about it. I will just go quickly through the ending as well. And uh, which is basically kind of the same as the previous part uh, of the same, but a little different. Exactly this part. Um, and to make it even more eerie and dark uh, for the ending of the song, I just prolonged this anthem and introduced a bit more harmonic or not harmonic but a bit more movement in the in the 808 i think this 808 is made with serum and some effects uh, saturation only actually and yeah, this one is probably the, the biggest difference, like the rhythmical placement of the 808 and the bends, which make it more like hard hitting, I suppose. Then we have this sound right here. Or like this sample rather. Just a duduk. Or, or some sort of um, flute, oriental flute sound, which uh, I made myself actually, uh, bounced it and saved it. So for future use, which I actually used here. 
the vocals. What do the vocals do? Done. Yet again, our favorite trick pitching down vocals one octave. Yes. So this is basically all together makes the last part. There's not a lot more going on. Um, just a few edits here and there to make it sound a bit different, having more ad libs of the vocals. So yeah, more or less that's about it. If you have any further questions about any sound you heard or anything I do, any any technique or um, you know process I do which you're interested in, please uh, let the comment down below and ask me so I can maybe go further into detail um, in an um, in a future video. I am really happy how this track um sound and yeah uh, i hope you like it too and i hope you stream it you watch the music video and you enjoy it that's the most important i guess hope to see you guys soon and see you in the next video ciao